well within Trinidad Broadcasting. And within about 24 months, I turned that into one of the most exciting and dynamic properties within Turner Broadcasting that was outperforming Monday Night Football on occasion. So, I, I mean, I, all of that came with a price, and there were bumps and mistakes and things I could have done differently if I was a genius and had a crystal ball, but I just don't think about them. And you can't really grow without making mistakes, so I understand where you're coming from on that. Uh, right now, you know, who do you see in the wrestling business when you and say, man, I wish I could have had them, you know, back then? Well, again, that's kind of a, it's just not where I come from. You know, I, I don't think of things that way. I don't live in the past. I don't dwell on shit like that. Oh, uh, let me, uh, sorry, let me rephrase. Who do you see uh, today that you I mean, could have look, made I, work then? I think Drew McIntyre's, you know, the next big deal. Um, I, you know, I, I I say this all the time, and people always laugh when I say it, and I still can't figure out why. I think Dolph Ziggler is every bit as talented as anybody on that roster, if not more so. I think he's an amazingly gifted and talented guy who is incredibly underutilized. Now, I say that acknowledging I don't know Dolph Ziggler. I don't know what he's like. I don't know what his goals are. I don't know what his work ethic is. I don't know what, you know, his potential really is because I've never really spent any time with him. But, in fact, not, not only have I not really spent any time with him, I haven't spent 30 seconds with him. So I don't really know him or what, he's, what his limitations or his potential are. All I know is what I see. I see a very, very entertaining young man. I see a very athletic young man. I see a guy who can be on a Monday night, if he needed to be, could be a believable ass kicking baby face or heel. And then on Tuesday night, he could probably do stand up comedy much like Kurt angle. You know, that's one of the cool things about Kurt. Kurt was so unique in that respect because he had so much credibility as an Olympic gold medalist. And obviously Dolph is an Olympic gold medalist, but he was NCAA wrestling champion, I believe. He has a great amateur background. If he wasn't an NCAA champion, he has a great amateur wrestling background. But he's a guy who physically could be as credible as he needed to be, but yet has the depth of character be, to be hilarious. You know, and he's smart. I watch him on Fox Business quite frequently. He's, he's not only a talented guy, he's a very smart guy. And when you have somebody that, that is, that's that gifted physically, and he's got a great look, you know, he's, he's got an amazing look for television. He's gifted physically. He's got the ability to be taken seriously, or he could be comedic. And when you have a character that, that's that well-balanced and that deep, it just shocks me that he's not being utilized, you know, more. I think he's a deeper character and has more potential than Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels was as talented as Shawn was in the ring. His character was, eh, pretty good. Not, not outstanding. Well, you have, uh, you've drawn a line in the sand because the question that we ask every single person that comes on the show is divided evenly between myself and Joe. All time, one or the other, Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels, where do you stand? Shawn Michaels by a mile and a half. Devastated. That is brutal news. I'll tell you, with everybody we've had on the show, it's like 35 to 2. So I am obviously on Team Bret Hart, and uh, I am now hurt. But that's okay. Well, and look, you know, I've got, Bret, Bret has his own issues. I have no brush issues with Bret. Bret showed up at my doorstep right now with a beer in his hand. I'd, be, I'd hug him, and I'd be anxious to sit down and have a beer with him. Bret, on the other hand, feels quite differently. Um, but here's, you know, there's, there's no bitterness. There's no anger. There's no, you know, payback. There's nothing, but I'm just going to be honest. Bret Hart's character, his personality, it didn't feel larger than life. He was a, a phenomenal technician, phenomenal technician, but he just didn't connect with the audience. They didn't look at him as a champion. They didn't look at him as a superstar. And I, I think he, Brad is a perfect example of, you know, the dividing line that you guys have, the line in the sand. Was he a great technician that could have great match, matches? Absolutely. I think him and Shawn Michaels were neck and neck in that regard. But did he have the ability to really be a character that was entertaining to the masses? No. He didn't. 
And that's the difference between Shawn Michaels and Brett. Shawn Michaels, and I, it's going to sound ironic because I was just suggesting that he really wasn't, you know, that deep as a character. Um, he, you know, he had a great look. He could, he could deliver. He had a, he, his character was great enough, but, you know, he wasn't a Stone Cold Steve Austin. He, you know, he, he wasn't a Hulk Hogan. He, he was never that guy. Um, but he was right there with him, you know, just one notch below him. Um, Bret Hart was two notches below that or three because he just didn't have the character to take him over the top. I, as much as it hurts me to hear, I would agree with you as far as his connectability to the audience too. I think it was a lot easier for Shawn Michaels to relate to the audience than it was uh, Bret Hart. So uh, guys like the Young Bucks though, where do, where do you stand on them? I mean, you know, like you said, as far as Dolph Ziggler, layers to his character and things like that in the ring, you were at All In, you know, while you were at uh, StarCast, as far as their connectability, are they guys that have to go to WWE at this point, do you think? Oh, no, God, no. No, you know, and I know none of them will call me an expert, all right? But if they did... And if they would listen to me for more than three minutes, I would spend the entire three minutes or whatever they would allow me to have to convince them to never go to WWE. They would get lost. And within 30 or 60 days, it would be Young Bucks Who. And the only reason people would be talking about them is because how disappointed they are in the way they're being positioned. In w they would get lost. They would get marginalized, and they would become institutionalized, being the WWE is an institution. It's a corporate conglomerate. And the reason the Bucks had Cody, you know, but hats off, because we're talking about the Bucks, but come on, let's talk about Cody for a minute. Cody was a guy who had all of the benefits of WWE, and there are a lot of benefits financially. He had the job security. He was, pro I don't know what he was making. I, you know, it's none of my business and I don't know what the going rate is anymore, but I'd be shocked if Cody Rhodes wasn't making three or 400 grand a year, even in the marginal roles he was, he was in three or 400 grand a year is a lot for a young man. And he was getting national exposure and he could have probably gone to bed at night as frustrated as he may have been at any given moment in terms of the way he was being used. He could also lay his head on the pillow and go, you know what? A year, two, or three from now, it's probably going to be different. And he would have been right. But he was willing to put it all on the line and say, you know what? Thank you, but no thank you. I'm going to go try and do it on my own. And I admire that so much. And he not only had the guts and the confidence and the vision to go off and do it on his own, he's gone off and done it on his own in such a glorious fashion. And along with him, the Young Bucks. And the Young Bucks never had to make a decision about, should I leave WWE or not? But now that they've established themselves to this massive audience, this massive independent audience, and they're right up there at the top with Cody, why in the world would you put your career in the hands of a bunch of people who don't appreciate you, nor do they really want to encourage other people to follow in your footsteps? Believe me, they, that's the last thing that WWE wants is, you know, a strong, powerful, competitive, independent scene. We, we, we talked about it. I mean, you don't have to take my word for it. I'm, I may be talking out of my ass half the time. I'm just giving you my opinion. But here are the facts. You told me just now Vince McMahon is meeting with Madison Square Garden trying to, trying to stop what's happening with two independent promotions. I mean, that's the last thing they want our guys like the Young Bucks to be successful. And the minute the Bucks or Cody were to go back or Kenny Omega were to sign with WWE, guess what that, guess what that tells everybody? Yeah, you can make it big for a little bit in the past, but, you know, you're going to end up in WWE, then your character dies. Believe me, the Young Bucks won't be the Young Bucks that you know in WWE. Nor would Cody Rhodes be the Cody Rhodes you know in WWE. Nor would Kenny Omega be Kenny Omega in WWE. It's just, you just got to be really careful about that. Now, if if the if the, uh, the aforementioned talent was at a position in their life where they wanted that you know high six figure, seven figure income, and were willing to forego the ability to control their destiny, absolutely do it. 
their accountants would probably tell them, do it. But if you want to be in control of your own destiny and your own sanity, yeah, <laughs> no, don't do that. Well, I think you really echo the sentiments of a lot of the fans of Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks and the Kenny Omegas who are worried of, that they're going to go down that path. And uh, I just want to let you know, earlier you said if you had $10 million in five years after this podcast, we're going to start a GoFundMe to get that uh, $10 million up and running so we could have uh, an alternative in the future. It's going to be uh, all my long wrestling podcast, GoFundMe for Eric Bischoff and his ideas to, uh, to combat what's going on today. But Eric, listen, we, we cannot thank you enough for coming on the show. Um, we appreciate your time and everybody who's listening I'm sure they already do but make sure you check out the 83 Weeks uh, podcast Eric Bischoff Conrad um, on Twitter at E. Bischoff and Patreon and Twitch Eric you are everywhere congratulations on all your success and, and being such an open book to the fans I know how much people like myself really appreciate it alright guys thank you for having me on I appreciate it very much thank you and have a great night bye bye